I want to start this podcast off by talking about some things that our fans are saying on Reddit. Um, Because there's a lot of really interesting things. And one of the first things I want to talk about is our Slytherin representation is through the roof. Yeah, it's like everybody is Slytherin. Honestly, like I do. So we do a new new members intro every like Monday or something like that. It's just a reoccurring post. And I cannot tell you how many people are like, I'm Slytherin. I'm like the fourth in the group. Like I like Danny's roommate is becoming like a person too. So like everyone's like, oh, so like know, I'm, I'm with uh, Danny's roommate. I'm a Slytherin here. Yeah. So I feel like I'm Slytherin still numbers. the only, I'm like the lone Ravenclaw. There's everywhere. not a lot of Ravenclaws. Huh. Yeah. I think there's two other Ravenclaws in the group. There's a few oh, Hufflepuffs really? and there's not a lot of Gryffindors either. There's maybe like two or three Gryffindors. Hmm. Right now, Slytherin is taking the cake. So our Slytherins are coming out wow. yeah. very that strong. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Also, um, I think Tony helps with that. I know. Yeah. Yep. They're they're uh, doing well. Also, another thing that we need to be very careful of. A few people have said this. We need to stop saying the M word. <laughs> As in mud blood. <laughs> I did think that. You know, I was like, we didn't even speak the one who shall yeah. not be named for a while. And here we are throwing around uh, the M word. That's like it's no fault. big deal. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys know what the substitute for that is? Oh, no. there is one? You yeah. didn't teach us. I know. Nice. I, so this is all this on is me. A, yeah, yeah, this is good. This is good. He can take the blame for yeah, this. What's the substitute? <laughs> like, what's a polite way to say Muggle it? Muggleborn. Muggleborn. So we say yes. Muggleborns. Okay. Am I like in attention than... now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the timeout chair. We need to have yeah, a timeout chair or like a penalty box for anyone who says what that. What is it in the corner with the <laughs> hat? A shame oh, cone. Yeah. A shame hat. A dunce hat. Whatever that is. Or a jar it could we be, put on um, the end. One. But it could be um, the sorting hat. You just yes. sit in the corner. Oh my gosh. The sorting this hat. This is great. Except like, so it just says terrible things instead of sort of <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> Or I'm looking at the pot, and you could have the um, the mandrakes. <laughs> like, yeah, right seriously, here. I know. <laughs> yes, I mean, oh, mandrakes. That'd be great. There was a great Halloween costume that was we sent around to each oh other. Gosh, that was cute. Oh. Yeah, Bait I of, would definitely do something like that. I'd be like a mandrake, or well, the baby. A they had a, they had a newborn, and the newborn was. The mandrake. mandrake. No, why so so And the couple good. is holding the pot with the baby oh, in it. And they have your muffs the on. earmuffs. <laughs> it is such that a cute so costume. Adorable. It was adorable. <laughs> I love that. So That's funny. You, all you guys understand all these Harry Potter episodes. Yeah, now I get it. Dress up like, I know that one. <laughs> yeah. yep. It's true. I was always in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> now you're in the light. <laughs> um, a few more things about this. I just, I came across, so one of our Redditors, Agua de Lupita, uh, I think that's how you say it, gave me the best understanding of what Peeves is that I've ever read. Oh, I nice. never read this before. But um, they said, I tried to look this up where I read this, but I couldn't find it. But I read, or maybe heard in, an, in another podcast, that J.K. Rowling stated Peeves was just an entity that exists because he pulls from the energy of the students. Hmm. He never lived. He never dies. Therefore, he is not a ghost. He is just the energy of all the students at Hogwarts. What? That's why he's so mischievous. Huh. I... Love that. I feel like that, that describes helps. him yeah. so well. Like yeah. all the energy yeah. of the students. That's why he's really mischievous because Fred and George is pulling from that energy. Hmm. And he is just like the embodiment the of the students. Make, yeah. 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 Well, makes sense. That makes I like sense. that. Thank you. Oh, whatever Agua, user. Aguada Lupita. I think that's your name. That's your username. Our Redditors are the best. Um, another one. <laughs> we've had like a few people. Like we have someone... Uh, Daniel Taylor Arch, who's like writing full essays. Oh my gosh, his like, are amazing. Yeah, I can't wait to show you guys some of this stuff. Really? He's writing full essays on like philosophy and Harry Potter and tracing Ooh, arguments through things. Yeah. He was the one that backed me up on my idea of Victor Crumb being noble for taking this niche. And he mm. wrote this whole long essay on it that was phenomenal. He's backed you up like a couple times know. and my tail just like goes yeah. between my legs. I'm like, well, because those are the things that I fought you back on. You texted <laughs> him Daniel. Like, well, he just proved your point there. <laughs> um, so that was great. And then on the Victor Crumb note, this is so cool to me. So let's chill, dude. Maybe one of our original subredditors. He, write, he writes this little thing early on in our, in our Reddit that I've been waiting to tell and talk to you guys about. Whoa. He goes, my friend's dad was working as a bouncer in Edinburgh, Borough, Edinburgh, around like 2000 or so. And some lady came up to him and chatted him and she said she was chatting for character inspiration. So he told her all about his time with the Bulgarian Navy 
about working on shifts and then shortly after he said or that he said the goblet of fire came out so let's chill dude might know the inspiration behind victor crumb what, what how cool world? would that be right <laughs> That's amazing. Wouldn't that be insane that if like, you didn't so know it and cool. J.K. Rowling just comes talking to you and <laughs> you're in like the next book comes out and you're like, that seems oddly like me. <laughs> wow. How incredible would that oh be? Oh my goodness. That is so cool. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah. We've also had other people talking about um, how many wizards there are in the world because we had that question. Oh yeah. And someone approximated about um 500,000 they came up with like a whole mathematical oh, thing. Oh nice. Good. Uh, good. 500,000 500, to a million, but I think it's doubled because their numbers for how big Hogwarts uh is cuz we they how many students were in the stands at that one time? Or it was 800 I think. 800, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they said Hogwarts numbers is, is around 400ish. So hmm. if you double that there's probably like maybe like 2 million wizards in the world. Um Hmm. around there i'm not sure it depends on the schooling systems too because maybe the, if this was like an assumption that hogwarts is the only magical school in great britain and maybe there's others that we just mm. don't know of yeah so like homeschooling yeah maybe <laughs> i still think there's a huge homeschooling <laughs> contingent somewhere and i mean we're also be. seeing a very western version of wizards yeah, exactly i'm picturing there are like tribes or entire mm. communities hidden out there yeah. that the rest of the wizarding world doesn't even know exists yes because they're putting all those hide themselves charms and spells out there. How do they mm. learn those charms though? Well, I'm imagining they don't even speak <laughs> English. They're just hidden out there in the world doing their own thing. Like kind of like the Egypt stuff, but like, you know, Madagascar. Like there could be entire islands that are just hidden from the world that are just out there and everyone is a wizard. Never know. Mm. Anything is possible. We are going to talk a little <laughs> bit about wizarding schools today. I wrote up Ooh, this nice. uh, little thing and I asked some people which wizarding school they would want to attend. And uh, we'll talk about that as we go on. So that's really fascinating too. And then um, one of the last ones that I want to mention before we kind of jump into these chapters is someone said this. And I want to read this whole post because this person loves a podcast too. Said, I'm new to the pod and I'm binging through them like way too fast. I'm now at the Prisoner of Azkaban <laughs> chapters 18 to 20. So I don't know if this has been addressed later on, but I'm screaming right now. <laughs> they said you were discussing Snape and Dumbledore and how old they were and guessed and then confirmed that Snape was about 43 and Lily and James maybe 30-ish when they died. But Lily and James were 21 when they died, which is crazy. Like they got married straight out of high school, had Harry and were killed. And that is their tragic story. So Snape in book huh. three is only 34 years old what he's oh. like our age oh he's young isn't that crazy and then what? alan rickman though amazing and adam driver who's fan casted as a young snape everyone wants adam driver to play young yes. snape, oh my gosh, which i think would be perfect. so good Ugh. they're all too old for the book timeline isn't that crazy wow. so alan rickman is way too old to actually be playing snape in the movies he's right. supposed to be 30 snape is a lot something. younger he's about like 35 34 maybe that is fascinating. I mean, that's good for him, though, because then he can mature more. Yes, yeah, so you're saying like, <laughs> he's got to mature at some point. <laughs> Goodness I'm gracious. Like, you got another 10 years to like, oh, work dude. on your bitterness. <laughs> yeah, you're still a little moody. You're like, what the heck is going on with this guy? <laughs> yeah, he's got some weird he's got some things. He I didn't think they were through. that huh. young, the Potters. Wow. Yeah. 21. Yeah. Right? They had Harry Whoa, when babies. she was like 20. It's insane. Oh, God. That is early. Were they from the South? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if anybody is from the that South. That was no offense. It's just <laughs> no, it's some statistically. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Get married younger hmm. down there. I went to school down there, so it's fine. Yeah. 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 So our our redditors, our uh, whole community, we love you guys so much. You guys are pulling out all the stops. <laughs> yes. Like they're doing research with me. It's so much it. fun. Team effort. I love this. We're stuff learning so much. so much. I know. Yeah. So uh, anyway, welcome to the podcast. I'm John. Jen. Danny. And Kristen. And this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. All right, this is a long episode, so I'm going to make this intro very, very short. Just follow us on social. We have 
the main channels that we're using right now are our Reddit, our subreddit, which is r slash first time readers. And then we're using our YouTube channel a lot, a lot to post some shorts and stuff like that. And we live stream these podcasts. We post the actual podcast content. So that's another great um, chance to see extra content that we're um, creating about this podcast. So subscribe to us on YouTube and then just rate and review us. That's, our, that's probably the best thing that you can do. Um, you can visit our website, email us. We have stickers, bookmarks. So if you want any, email me at firsttimereaders at gmail.com and we'll send you some uh, bookmarks and we'll send you some other cool little merch stuff. Anyway, enjoy these chapters, chapters 15 to 16 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Who we got you right before you were about to take a sip. I was like, we actually did it. Where Chris is not eating or drinking. (laughs) (laughs) Always eating. (laughs) Also, Kristen made some pumpkin banana bread. Mm. That's very like Harry Potter. Anything with pumpkin in it, it's like the fall. Yes. Mm. It's Harry Potter season. Perfect. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, Kristen. You're welcome. Also, we're supposed to do chapters um, 15 to 18. But we don't know how much we're going to get through. We're, we're uh, going to have like a 12.30 cutoff. Um, and then we might record some of these later on in the week or maybe tomorrow. We'll, we'll kind of figure it out as we go. But we are on to chapter 15, which is Beau Baton and Derm String. So someone give me a summary of these two chapters. Or sorry, this chapter, these two chapters. Beau Baton and Derm String arrive at Hogwarts. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. You nailed it. <laughs> the only other big old thing was that Harry resisted an Imperial curse. Yes. Oh, that was big really moment. right. Big, right, right, big right, right, moment. Right. We're going to talk about that at length. It's and then be... Sirius wrote to him like, right back. Yep. And or basically the, what I said last time was, <laughs> <laughs> that he has to be careful sending his uh, head wi- head Hedwig. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> to uh, Sirius, he needs more of a disguised owl because and he's getting closer and closer. In these chapters, school gets crazier too. Like they're oh, like, like, oh man, it's intense. intense. Yeah, yeah, they're like, your OWLs are coming up and now you got to start taking all this way more seriously. And then the kids are like, but that's not till next year. I was Doesn't thinking matter. like, were they doing this though? Because they... Because of the uh, championship, the Triwizard Championship, where they're like, all right, let's get all your work done in now, and then you can, hmm. like, Because they know how distracted it. they'll yeah. be later. Or I hmm. thought it's also because they think something bad, I don't know, is happening, so you need to learn all this now because there's a lot of stuff going on. You need yeah. to be caught up. So you don't you buy it. You think the teachers are saying this, but it's an excuse. Yeah. That would make sense. Because wouldn't Ron know? You know, like, he'd be like, oh, Fred and George, they told me fourth year really turns up the heat. Um, but we had no warning. All of a sudden, they're just like swamped with work. Yeah, it's like junior year in American college or in high school. You're like, that's the year that every you do so much, and everyone knows that's the toughest yeah. year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So if they don't know that fourth year is the toughest year, maybe maybe it is because the teachers are really preparing them because there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. Yep, that's what it felt like to me. Hmm, that would yeah. make sense. Mm-hmm. I still don't fully understand the OWLs either. Um. And why are they doing that fifth year? Because it's like SATs. You do like I guess SATs yeah. and then SATs. Do you SATs. take it again then sixth and seventh year? Or your fifth year OWLs lock you in. That's your score for forever? For life. Like this, that's the part I just don't huh. quite get. It feels too early. Like you're going to take those and then continue to study. Just well, it's weird. like the SATs though. Like I guess. we take Dude, them and take I did terrible year. and I got into college and I survived. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and then it doesn't matter ever again. And, uh, but yeah. now SATs don't exist anymore because of COVID. So we're good. More comes up about hmm. this too. So you'll learn kind of why they stay in school, all that kind of stuff um, a, a little bit later on. Probably. Oh, nice. I don't know if it's toward the end of this book, but you'll learn about it a bit more maybe in the next book. Um, also, this is another interesting little tidbit. How far along do you think we are in the books? Like what percentage? Random question here. Percentage Wait, of all like of the all seven, seven books? Mm-hmm. Oh, 45. Close. We're 33% through. As 33. We're, yeah, we're only a third through. What? So, well, because that's that's long, right? so, right? so you still have two thirds of the journey. That's left. actually exciting. Yeah. I'm like looking, I'm like, 
we're about halfway through book four, and I'm thinking we're halfway. Yeah. Nah. Ah, we got tons of work. We still got a lot of recording to do on this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking that um, it's my busy time at work from like January to March, and I'm like, oh man, if we go to Universal and Harry Potter World in January, that might be tough. But then as we keep like extending it, I'm like, March is perfect. Yeah, we're like summer now. April. May. I don't know. <laughs> and then... Uh, like I said, in September, it'll be next year. <laughs> yeah. And then by the fall, we can go to Edinburgh or uh, yes. London, you know, King's Cross, et cetera, et cetera. Oh my gosh, I need to get a passport. Good Lord. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you do actually have to do that. Just start, yeah, we'll get them now. So by we'll probably get At, them by the time we finish the right. podcast. <laughs> it will take months. Oh, yeah. Start prepping. Yeah. We have plenty of time. Also, we have, uh, we have a few people in the chat. Um, Alpha Wolfgang. Alpha. He's here. Hey. And, uh, Our boy. He is mad at us because he's from the South. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> We're just saying you guys Please get married young me. down there. I mean, I yeah, lived we in the South, the South for I lived in the my South. My brother lives for in Florida. My other brother lives in Tennessee. I love the South. It's kind of like a thing. We love you just you. get married a little bit younger. Yeah. Um, I'm old and bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it personally. <laughs> All right. Um Moody is uh, we we're kind of learning about um, the teacher is lumping on a lot of workload for them. And Moody keeps saying this. He keeps saying that Dumbledore wants them to learn these things. Do you really think that's true? Do you fully trust that Dumb- that Moody is telling the truth? Or do you think that Moody is just using this as an excuse to teach what he wants? Oh <laughs> to have my. more oversight. That would be no, that's I really definitely funny. did question that, though. Really? I like, did Yeah, it did cross my mind. It like, did? It did, huh. shockingly. Usually I don't think about these things. Hmm. But I was like, is he... I don't know. I didn't come to a conclusion. Hmm. I was like, I don't know how I feel about that. It just seems strange to me that Dumbledore is okay with some of these lessons. Right. I don't know. I don't know if we just know Dumbledore enough to know if this is in his character that he would want his students learning this. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that Dumbledore, if he was a defense against a dark arts teacher, would he be teaching um, the unforgivable curses in this way? Not in this way. I can't imagine that. Hmm. He's but I think he would teach them. Yeah. You think so? I just feel like he's gentler g- hmm. yeah. <laughs> about teaching and like his the wisdom he has, he would be able to deliver a lesson that wouldn't harm people or make them feel like uh, the trauma from past. Like, I think he just would approach it a lot better. Yeah. But I think he would teach this. I don't know. I think I think that he, Moody has the like uh, green light to like go ahead. I just don't mm. know if he knew exactly how he would <laughs> yeah. uh, teach the lessons. That's what I picture too. Like I can't picture Dumbledore sitting down and doing like a curriculum talk with Moody. Yeah, like that just doesn't make sense. Um, but. I could picture them having a little discussion where Dumbledore speaks in riddles like he often does. I'm picturing like when he gave Hermione the wink about the time turner and stuff. Just that like kind of twinkle in his eye mentality where he might have talked to Moody and been like, things are getting a little suspicious in the world. Might be good to start teaching the students more advanced defense techniques this year. You know, like kind of hinting towards it and then Moody can run with it. Yeah. Um, And there's a reason why Moody is at the school right now. Yeah. He is advanced in this kind of stuff. And Dumbledore brought him for a specific reason. Yeah. He came out of retirement and he's teaching just one year because of this exact reason. Because Dumbledore, I think, most likely wants them to learn this kind of stuff. And Dumbledore's always been the type of like you... you this is your role. This is your topic and go with it. Like, I'm not going to meddle. Yeah. I'm not going to like micromanage your lessons at all. Mm-hmm. However you want to do it, you do it. Yeah. He's a great. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting statement. He's a great uh, headmaster because he doesn't micromanage because he's not like you need to do this curriculum perfectly. Hogwarts is a bit chaotic because of that, because they don't have it doesn't seem like they have any prescribed yeah. curriculum. But I actually love that as far as education is concerned because I'm like, it gives teachers a freedom to actually be able to teach what they value or they, what they think the students mm-hmm. need to learn. And That's this is true. one of those years in particular. Hmm. They didn't learn anything their first two years and they, they made up for it in their third year and now their fourth year, it's like mm-hmm. all hands on deck. Mm-hmm. I feel like though it's nice because that's like real life as you don't real life's not a curriculum of yeah. like what to mm-hmm. do, what not to do and like follow all these steps. It's kind of everything's just like thrown at you with yeah. different personalities and... How do you 
um, work through that. Yeah. I don't know. Do you ever think that the Ministry of Magic would um, overstep their bounds? Like, do you, because um, there's, there's slight comments about some of this stuff saying like, oh, Hogwarts, even Rita Skeeter. She mentioned in chapter 18, oh, your, your methods are a bit like old fashioned, mm. Dumbledore. <laughs> do you think that uh, uh, the Ministry of Magic would ever step into Hogwarts and like implement curriculum or like throw someone in there who um, would force the, the school to like, I guess, get organized? I feel like they have no yeah. right to do that because they're not organized <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, who are they? Yeah. <laughs> that's that. a great point. I wonder they if they've would. ever done that in the past. They would, Danny, you said? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder that too. Wait, when, um, when... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. What? Oh. What's that, Wes? You um, really like, scare you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, barked back whoa. at him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 Too. That I know. was like a jerk reaction. Sorry, guys. It's like that was tense. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> wasn't Dumbledore sweating. removed at some point? <laughs> but I forget what the whole situation was or when that was or why. That, where, like, like a couple books ago. Yeah, where like Lucius Malfoy mm-hmm. got involved and yeah. everything. So, Hagrid went too. Yep. And oh, yeah, and Hagrid was in Azkaban. And so I'm kind of wondering like, who at the ministry is in charge of that and they can remove the headmaster but maybe the headmaster has full control when he's there yeah so that's the part i don't fully get that dynamic like who actually has the power there um i think it looks very much like a business it's like hmm. uh there's a board of directors it's yeah, the governors yeah. of the school and they control um oh, yeah, pretty much governors. everything at the school but they're not the ones that are Day in, day out. Dumbledore is the one that's day in, day out. He pretty much has free reign. So if they don't like what Dumbledore is doing and they just want to get rid of him, they would get. They could get rid of him. They have that, right. that, they have that ability. Right. But they, they're not going to meddle in like classes, curriculum, any of that kind of stuff. It's like their only decision is like, do we like Dumbledore or not? Right. <laughs> hmm. and, and it seems like so far they like him. Yeah, they, they seem to like him so far. But not everyone does. Yeah. Including Rita Skeeter. <laughs> what did she call him? Do you I still think know. she's a good journalist? <laughs> yeah, maybe not anymore. Maybe a little less. <laughs> well, I still feel like she is a good journalist. Yeah. But a lot of people, in order to be a good journalist, you gotta you're not you making friends. Nosy. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta make enemies, if a anything. A little bit of snake in her. But now I don't yeah. like her. So yes. before I liked her and yeah. she was a good journalist, and now I'm like, ooh, nope. She's because later on she asks questions to Harry that I'm like, these are fascinating, such good journalist questions. Yeah, yep. but the way she asks them, I'm like, oh come on, you could do it a little bit better. Yeah, and she was and leading the answers. witness and whatever. Yeah. But that quill thing is we'll crazy to too. I know because it, it like goes off on its own thought process. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was wondering, is it reading her mind? I don't know, or is it just a mind of its own? I mean, we'll get there when we get there. But I know, there but was you've such already a funny up. line. I know, I already, so this is my issue, but I love when um, she goes, Testing, my name is Rita Skeeter, Daily Profit Reporter. Attractive blonde, Rita Skeeter, 43, whose yep. savage quill has punctured many inflated reputations. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's great writing, so too. Good. I know, that is such good little writing. Like, I'm, if I'm reading an article, I'm like, this is a great lead yeah. right here. This is a yeah. good first <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, this is another interesting one. We talked about the Imperius Curse. Why do you think Harry was actually able to resist the Imperius Curse when everyone else in the class couldn't? Hmm. I guess, do you think it's because he is more advanced in his defense against the Dark Arts? Or do you think there's another reason behind it? I don't think he's more advanced. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he's a better student. I think it's something inherent. And it's got to be the same thing that made him resistant to... Um, what Voldemort was trying to do to him. Um, right? Like, wouldn't that make sense? It's mm-hmm. that same something that made him resistant there enough that it was like death, nope, blocked, life. Um, now it's the same thing. He's trying to be controlled, but he can resist it. But I don't know. It comes like natural to him, though. It's like he yeah, didn't exactly. even try did to try. like, all yeah. of a sudden his voice is like saying, no, why do that? You know well, what it reminded me part? of? Yeah. What? Totally switching gears. Divergent. Uh, did I see? Remember, oh, I did watch nobody. the movie, the first one and the second one, and then the oh, third one. I thought was eh. never mind. That's what it reminded voice? me of. Yeah, she. It's like the same thing. She went through a test and she was able to resist it, and it was the same type thing. It was like she heard 
this voice in her head and it was like why oh yeah that's coming and back she to me was now able to fight back hmm. but it was very similar and that's so. why she was divergent yes so harry is divergent, He's divergent. <laughs> <laughs> well i think i'm curious what the voice is like i'm like is that like Oh, I wonder how that was in the audiobook. I was like thinking, is this his mom? Is it his dad? Is this like a part of him or like Dumbledore, you know, whispering to him from afar? Like, no, it was his mind. It was just his Just voice. his own voice. mind, his I mean, own voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's just something in him that is like resistant to it. Like another part of him? But then I was like, is it part of, Sir- um, not Sirius, uh, Voldemort? Is it like part of yeah. him in, because he's super advanced wizard, dark mm. wizard. So could it be because he has some of the qualities, mm. right, of Voldemort yeah. that were like kind of transferred to him as a kid? Could be. Or maybe this is why Voldemort was going after Harry because as a baby. Because yeah, he's right. like, wow, you're he advanced. How powerful or he you're a natural advanced wizard i don't even know what Hmm. that means (laughs) that's interesting so possibly it could be the part in voldemort um that's in harry that is saying that is the one resisting the imperious curse maybe Hmm. because it's strong enough i mean he's such a dark wizard that people are afraid of him that i feel like why wouldn't he be able to do like it's just someone controlling you it doesn't have to be evil or like good right. or evil it's just like controlling and he's like no that's not happening to me mm. like rebelling it there is something yeah. different about harry for a lot of these things even his ability to cast a patronus so early yeah. and so young i think does set him apart as being i don't know if it's within his own skill but i i think it's kind of maybe what both of you guys are saying like maybe it is a part of voldemort that makes him advance in these magics in, the, in this like magic but maybe it's just something that's innate within him like his parents seem like they were very good magicians um maybe it's just like the chosen one idea again mm. he, this person just comes around every once in a mm. while and he's incredible at what he does and he just has this intuition about magic and he's just very very good at what he does yeah i'm thinking of like an athlete you know like natural yeah. like they're just so good at it they yep. don't even really mm. realize how great of an athlete they are and then everyone starts seeing it and then they just need a little bit of training and they're like pff, like off on yeah hmm. another level yeah but i'm not sure oh. if that would be an insult <laughs> to these wizards and witches do you guys so. think that you could resist the imperious curse <laughs> i don't know don't try it on me um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes i could do it yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, why? Why do you want me to <laughs> jump on? <laughs> I wish we heard from another student's perspective what it was like mm-hmm. in their own minds. Yeah. Uh, because we only heard Harry's resistance, but even that felt like it wasn't so conscious. It was another part of him, but like other people, how'd it feel for them? So when like, yeah, I want to jump on this desk for sure. Thing, they because when they first describe it too, it was like a like a f- cozy voice that you feel like happy and light or whatever, like right. kind of like a high like, that they're he's putting on you, so that way you're like following whatever <laughs> um, <laughs> they want you to do. But for some reason, but then Harry doesn't like the comfort like i feel like he always goes Mm. out of his comfort zone likes the challenge so like maybe that plays into Mm. his resisting it and maybe it's just because harry has a trust issue maybe it's his general distrust of people Mm. that's causing him to Uh, he he has like this voice in his head and he's like i don't trust that i'm not gonna tell this voice anything right right (laughs) that is true though it could be that too yeah i was also wondering with the Imperial curse, if you're controlling someone to get them to do something, there are physical limitations that that person has. They can't do something impossible. Um, Like jumping on the desk, is he jumping 10 feet or is this something he could have done on his own? Um, Like jump a normal height. And so if someone is making him do it, Moody's making someone do something, um, is that something that Moody can also do? I'm only speculating Hmm. because of Neville's gymnastics 
I think Moody may have had a gymnastics past <laughs> where <laughs> in his prime, he was a gymnast. What the? And now with his leg, he can't do his gymnast stuff anymore. Just so every once leg. in a while, he likes to relive the glory days by imperioing uh, Neville or a student. Because I'm like, Neville doesn't know how to do gymnastics. So the only way it would have worked is if if <laughs> Moody knew how to do the moves and was making him do the moves correctly. I think there's also a point to <laughs> <You're> it. <nuts. laughs> I like that theory. I think there's also a point to it where you have a wand, so he can. There's probably some flexibility charm. So once you imperious oh, the person, nice. You're maybe right. Maybe you can also make someone more flexible, or hmm. like make them float. Like to me, um, they weren't imperious, but the the family and the triwizard or in the um, yeah, World Cup, yeah, they were floating up in the air. So I'm like. A, a wizard, you can imperious someone. That's like the base curse of you're in that person's head. You can pretty much, they're more right. persuasive. Yes. And then you can tell them to jump and they'll jump. But then you can also like anti-gravity and make them jump. Yeah, really you're high, right. You know? You're like right. Ant you can like hit them with a bunch at the same oh, time. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is a powerful curse. Have you guys ever been able to like resist or have you ever come out of a dream that you've had in your head? Like when you're dreaming been like, this is a dream. I need to like stop dreaming right now. And come out of this. Hmm. Has that ever happened with you? It's mm. rare, but it's happened. Yeah. Yes. Or the actually. opposite. It's really fun. You want to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In. Exactly. When you wake up and you're like, no. Or like you feel th you're like you're fading out of the dream. You're like, wait, this is a dream. No, I like this. I'm going to stay. <laughs> I will not wake up. That works Have you ever you? done that? You I wake up and you try to go back to sleep. And you're no. like, go back, go back. Yeah. <laughs> And then sometimes when you wake up and you fall back asleep, you're like, please start chapter two in my dream right now. <laughs> yeah. I have, I'll, I'm not, I'm like, I'm going to out myself as an uber nerd. I've definitely dreamt about Harry Potter. And I remember one yeah. specific dream where I was about to get my Hogwarts letter and open it and go on the Hogwarts Express. And I woke up right at that moment. Oh, and I was that's like, tragic. I hate everything. And it was the worst day after that in the entire world. I was like, Goodness. screw all of this. <laughs> I did have I one like, instance with a dream though. Yeah, it was like the greatest moment of my life, and then it was a dream. No. Uh, oh my gosh! I do so have, sweetheart, so we need to get sad. you out more. Guys, <laughs> you do realize that was so Alex, great. I love this book. Like getting the yeah, yeah. letter no would be idea. the coolest thing in the entire yeah. world. Wow. Okay, I did have this one instance though when I was with camping. Avila. <laughs> 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 uh, what's her name? Her wand is Vilayer. We'll talk about that in a little bit. That's yeah, an interesting that's so weird. <laughs> you guys are off the rails this morning. Okay. I do Coffee. have one story. I was camping with a few friends, and we were out in the middle of the Appalachian Trail. Um, so we were up, uh, up on the East Coast, and um, it was pouring rain that night. And we were in this little shelter, because the Appalachian Trail has all sorts of shelters on it and stuff like that. We were in this little shelter and we had eight guys crammed into like a four person shelter. So it's a tiny shelter. So we had like guys pitching hammocks across it. It was like sardines and there was no more room. Mm. And I was the oldest guy and I was like the leader of the group. So I slept in the step outside uh -huh. and they put a little tarp over so I wouldn't get crazy wet. And I remember I had the worst night of sleep of my entire life, but I fell asleep at like two, three a.m. And uh, I remember this is another this is going to show how nutty I am. I loved every moment of that though. It was so much fun. It was miserable. My sleeping bag was soaked and it was like, <laughs> it was raining. I kept feeling like a draft on my face and like a rain spatter uh, on my face and it was awful, but I loved it. And I was like, I cannot wait to finish this trip and like, it's going to be so great. So I remember having a dream <laughs> that night what? where I, it was Christmas. And I don't, I don't know why I remember uh, this so Hogwarts. vividly. No, I wish it was Hogwarts. <laughs> it was a dream. <laughs> I remember having a dream and it was Christmas and I was actually disappointed that it was Christmas and that I was dreaming about this. And I knew in my head, I said, I, this is not real. I am on this step right now in misery camping, but I'm loving every minute of it. And I'm like, in my head, I knew I was like, I didn't, I don't remember finishing this trip. I don't know what's going on. So in my head, I said, this isn't real, wake up. And I didn't wake up. And so in my Ooh. dream, I came to accept that it was a reality, which is like, sounds like inception. Yeah, like, really? Really? Yeah. 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 Dream, oh my goodness. You know? And then uh, I kept going and I was like depressed that day during Christmas. And then eventually I fell asleep in my dream and woke up in the woods and I was like, nice. Whoa, <laughs> I get to finish this trip. One That's of the most vivid, awesome. like lucid, terrifying dreams I've ever had in my life. That's weird. Where it was Whoa. like, uh, 
like sleep paralysis too people talk about that it was like that but in my dream i could not wake up i remember literally pinching myself in my dream and i didn't wake up it was crazy it was wild that is kind of crazy anyway (laughs) okay so that's what camping does to you yes i know i I love it so much fun (laughs) he's like i love being in misery (laughs) it's so much fun you will not eat you will not eat a better meal than the meal after you finish camping a shower will not feel better the shower that you take when you're clean after hiking and camping experience is better than the actual experience no, the actual experience is incredible. It's I love the actual important. experience, but it's like every it's every aspect okay. of it. It's, nah, we'll do it. We'll do it one of these days. Guys. Yeah. Uh, Glamping. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bring... Well, here's the thing. Yeah, we'll we'll bring a trailer. If they ever camp in Harry Potter, then we'll probably have to camp yes. and do a podcast it. recording while camping oh, yes. boy. somewhere. So let's oh cross boy. our fingers. That's not a that good old boy. <laughs> well, that means they camp later. They, so that's they, excellent. They know of their. Oh, great. Let's all cross I mean, our fingers. Yeah. Hope that they camp sometime down in, down in the books. Excellent. <laughs> <Good>. um, <laughs> Well, they kind of did. Oh, I didn't realize what I was responding to. I'm no. just in my head. I'm stuck in the, the fact games, that yeah, the, the Quidditch World Cup. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank Excellent. you, Kaylee. This is awesome. We're, gonna, We're going, no, guys. Not thank you, Kaylee. <laughs> I like this. We're going to the Quidditch World Cup. Jen can watch us play there. And uh, <laughs> I do have a 12-person oh, tent. <laughs> a 12-person tent. <laughs> There's oh lots gosh. of room. That's glamping. Oh my gosh, that is. Oh man. Do you have a ton of hammocks too? I have three hammocks. Oh, I got boy. a hammock. Oh, we're I have like a, I have a hammock. <laughs> Guys, we're set. Let's do this. Record out in the woods. <laughs> Sounds okay, amazing. Anyway. Let's go right now. <laughs> it, it says this. It's There's nice another quote in this. It says, well, the heads of the participating schools are always on the panel, said Hermione. And everyone looked around at her rather surprised because all three of them were injured during the tournament of 1792 when a cockatrice, um, uh, the champions were supposed to be catching, went on the rampage. Do you guys know what a cockatrice is? No. No. <laughs> nope. Were we allowed to Google it? Yeah, yeah you can. You can there, it's like a mythical creature. It's actually like a biblical creature. Um, it's a... Uh, what is it? It's like a rooster dragon. What? <laughs> no joke. It's got the head of a rooster <laughs> and a tiny the, like, the body of a small serpent dragon. How do you spell it? Whoa. C-O, uh, C-O-C-K-A-T-R-I-C-E. You can Google that. We'll like pause for a second. It's like a... Basilisk. What really? That's what it says when I looked it up. It says wow. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, care, careful on your spelling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we yeah. also have spotted dick over there because we're gonna maybe munch on that <laughs> later or uh, <laughs> the next podcast. Oh my! <laughs> that the, is the uh, ugliest thing ever. Right? Oh, can I see? It's a yeah. weird looking creature. Oh my! Do you guys think that... Uh, okay, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, do you think that you could battle that thing if you were a wizard? Well, is this a dragon-sized chicken or a chicken-sized dragon? <laughs> it's kind of like a chicken-sized dragon. Okay, okay, a little, that, bit, a little bit larger. A little larger. Yeah. I can picture it like a turkey head. kind of, maybe a little bigger. I think it's even a little bigger but than can that. Can it breathe like, fire? It's, like, that's it's like a bear size oh. rooster dragon. Okay, that's... I wouldn't want to <laughs> battle it. But if I had to, I probably... If I had a wand and could, you know, yeah. fight it that way, then maybe I'd feel Wait, better about it. what did it. they say in the book again? That they, they, they couldn't... Went on the rampage. 1792. And, like, killed. Killed all three, maybe? <laughs> because all three of them were injured during the tournament. So, uh, the, she was saying that it's the judges. The judges were injured because all three of the participating school judges were injured when the concatrice went on the rampage. Ah. So, even the judges were injured during this. Man. And then also on top of this, if you guys, so as ugly. to the extent of your knowledge of magic right now, how would you defeat a cockatrice? <laughs> Let's put your magical <laughs> skills to the test. Huh? I have zero. I'll leave this to you guys. A net. <laughs> <laughs> I would cast a huge net and trap it. Yeah, that's not bad. I actually. mean, yeah, that isn't bad, right? Yeah. Like you move around other objects to just like block it or cage it in or something or you go on your firebolt and Ooh. just fly away i assume it can fly too though yeah but not as fast not as, as fast nice. <laughs> hmm. that's a good one jen hmm. just came naturally <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a natural <laughs> I'd be dead. <laughs> no, I would save you. Oh, thank you. You 
pull me onto the firebolt. I think there's <laughs> something really interesting too in creativity in spells. Like, uh, yeah. I think creative magicians are sometimes the best magicians that if you're thinking outside the box, like even the idea of jumping on a firebolt and like bolting out of there um, or like casting it is a good one, but like coming up with some kind of random creative one. I think something that was really impactful for this was the ridiculous charm when they have to be creative mm. to make something laugh. So like you can even, if this is a <laughs> dragon, little rooster dragon, you can, I don't know, like make ice and make it slip on ice or yeah. something like that. Then when it breathes fire, you can, you know, douse mm. it with water. Or, Does it know. breathe fire since it has a rooster head? What Maybe. kills roosters? People. I don't know. And yeah. a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Ginny. <laughs> oh, nice. Because remember, Ginny was going around the school in the second book oh, killing shoot, all the roosters. Oh, shoot, that's right. All oh, my gosh. Need, I just hire her. You just need to summon Ginny, <laughs> and she's going around <laughs> and killing this thing real easy. <laughs> a, a machete. Mm. <laughs> yeah. A giant one. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that's a good one. Mm. Like in uh, the first movie, the first book, they use Wingardium Leviosa to take the club. The and, club on the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the troll on the head. So you do that with a big machete. Oh, yeah. You create a big Boom. machete. Raise it over this thing's head and just wait. It's like a little, yeah. uh, what are those things called? Guillotine. That, guillotines, yeah. Yeah. You just wait for it to come and you just chop things head off. And you even uh, yeah. can create some corn kernels, something to yeah. entice it. <laughs> put it into it's place. a rooster, it wants <laughs> corn. Wow, you know, yeah. <laughs> corn. I'm, I'm impressed with yeah. your creativity to kill this thing. <laughs> mm. Is um, that how spells work? You just like come up with like, uh, like it just, I guess I'm, I can't imagine what it's like because like there's all these known spells that you have yeah. to like concentrate and say it the right way and blah 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 but then how do you create new ones like you can make up your own i think you can to an extent you need to be very well versed in magic to be able to come up with your own there is like the the established base of what spells are so you can do a lot under the sun of all these different things but mm. there are certain spells that you can't do obviously the unforgivable curses but i think it's kind of up to your creativity but there is the point where there are people creating spells in the world right now and like experimenting and i think that's very dangerous because if one of your spells goes wrong like you you still have to master it to some point and if one, if one of those goes wrong and you're like experimenting and dabbling with unknown magic it could be really dangerous mm so interesting yeah it's hard to and i think yeah i think the magical world is pretty expansive so there's just a ton that you can learn and uh do for these things um but madame maxine says will you inform this hagrid that the horses only drink single malt whiskey (laughs) (laughs) how drunk are these horses (laughs) thanks that's my good friend oh we should have made you do that with your french knowledge accent come on (laughs) jim dale did it very similar to that's probably where you Got How drunk from. are these horses? This is very. insane. This is the only Maybe thing they have to be drunk to fly. Yeah. <laughs> that's very dangerous. Yeah. Hmm. So is Hogwarts. So. Yeah, it's a lot goes with Hogwarts. <laughs> Maybe hmm. this uh, Bobat- oh, what is Bobaton. Bobaton? Yeah, okay. I said it right. Um, maybe that's a thing they do there. Yeah. Maybe it's even more dangerous than it's Hogwarts. France, mm. they probably drink a lot. So single malt whiskey is a typical morning Actually, it's probably like drink. water for them. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I because they're... Fr- <laughs> yeah. One of my friends is German, and uh, he said when you go over to Germany, uh, beer is like cheaper than water there sometimes. Yep. So you just get a beer. That's really? crazy. I'm not surprised. Which, uh, which school entrance do you like better, Bobaton or Durmstrang? Durmstrang was kind of cool with them really coming cool. up oh, right. from the water yeah. with the mask. Like yeah, that's why I liked it. I'm like, yeah. yes, pirates. Yeah. <laughs> But I had a hard time picturing the carriage and the horses. Same. Like I pictured something, but then the size of it is what threw me off. Like maybe that would have been really awesome. And I think I also pictured the lake being farther away. Mm. So I was kind of like, it almost felt like it was way off in the distance. But I love that the carriage seemed to be landing right in front of them. Yeah. So it just seemed like very cool. They yeah. both were pretty awesome. Yeah. Like you're looking over the black lake, like binoculars, your binoculars. <laughs> yeah. It takes like 20 minutes for them to walk all the way up to get off the <laughs> you're like, you're okay, like, guys, we're cool. This is, yeah. You couldn't have parked a little bit closer. <laughs> 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 how do you like how this chapter ends? Because Karkaroff beckoned forward one of his students. As the boy passed, Harry caught a glimpse of a prominent curved nose and thick black eyebrows. He didn't need the punch on the arm Ron gave him. Or the hiss in his ear to recognize that profile. 
Mm -hmm. Harry, it's Crumb. (laughs) I love the ending of that. Great ending. Right? Mm -hmm. Did you think that Crumb was ever going to come back? Did you think that he was a student? You probably didn't. I thought he was going to come back in some way, but not like this. Yeah. Yeah. How could he be a kid? I know. I'm just suspicious of the whole thing. Now I'm like, maybe he really did do the dark mark. Mm. It's too weird because dark mark goes up and he was there. You had mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. And he was not on my radar back then. Mm, Not as good as a detective as me. For him to come back, I'm like, that makes anyone who was at the World Cup and is now here for the Triwizard is suspicious. Yeah. So now he's on the list of suspects for me. But then so is the teacher. Which teacher? The, um, I'm so like because Crumb's I don't teacher, read it. I Kark- can't Kark- like Kark- yes. Kark- Kark- Wait, why he was at the World Cup too? No, no. What I'm saying is like his teacher now makes me think like, oh, maybe his teacher is a little evil in his own way because yeah. Moody doesn't like him and was saying stuff mm, to him. Yeah, I'm so curious. And how then they... Crumb and him are like very tight, or like yeah. he loves Crumb, or maybe he's convincing Crumb to do things. So that's where my mind went. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, like if Crum is doing a the opposite of an aging thing, reverse aging, you know, like he's old and he made himself young to compete, then the teacher's in on it. And that's why it seems weird Super that... Super senior. Yeah, exactly. He's like, he graduated years ago and he's like, just keeps coming back. Um, I feel like Hagrid knows some of these things that are going to be in the Triwizard Tournament. And Hagrid's being good about not sharing it, although Harry and Ron tried to get him to spill the beans. But I'm like, there's no way these other professors aren't spilling the beans. Like, Crumb knows what these things are. Mm. If his professor knows, then he knows. And the way he's treating him, too. Especially after Harry ends up being the fourth person, and we're getting to the next chapter, but... um, I'm like, oh, if they feel like they've been cheated a little bit. I'm sure they're sharing all the info they can right now to try and give their own people oh. an advantage. Yeah. Both of those professors or those headmasters in particular seem like that. Dumbledore doesn't seem like the person who would right. Harry or Cedric any. Yep. So it kind of sucks because you're like, they're, they don't know what the heck they're talking about. But do you think Hagrid will ever spill the beans? He says to get drunk. <laughs> sure, honestly yeah he he would he's spilled worse beans oh, than Madame this before Maxine just have her around and he'll be like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> just like, spill everything just like that. Her. and in fact I thought that when they started walking up towards the castle even if Madame Maxime didn't already know mm. she probably got Hagrid to tell her whatever she wanted to know about the oh, challenges boy. so that she can go tell Floor I'm trying Delacour. to picture what she looks like <laughs> Ma- Madame Maxine, yeah. like when she first Large. landed and was gigantic, I'm like, she's either related to Hagrid or going to be a love interest. Yeah. And I was like, I was like waiting it. for that moment, and I was like, yes. Are you wearing cologne, Hagrid? <laughs> that was so funny. Aww. He goes off and washes it in like a barrel in yeah, his yeah, uh, yeah. front lawn. I'm happy for Hagrid. Do they show this in the movies? They have to. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see. Madame Maxine? Yeah, like I just want to, like, yeah. Like yeah. the She's romance in it. The yeah, whole yeah. thing. No, I just want to see what she just her. Like. She's in the movies. <laughs> and Karkaroff yeah, is good. in the movies. Most of these characters are all in the movies. Good, so, good. Um, That's all I want to know. Yeah. People say there's the largest disparity between the books and the movies in this specific one, um, this specific movie, but um, the, it's like the all these characters plot? are still in it. So hmm. oh. um, we'll, we'll kind of get there. Um, but we're on the chapter 16, The Goblet of Fire, because we're talking about some things in The Goblet of Fire. Yeah, what is the summary yeah. of this one? The tournament started. Hagrid has a crush on Madame Maxime. Ron has a crush on Fleur Delacour. And the champions are announced uh, by the Goblet of Fire. Victor Crumb, Fleur, Cedric, and Harry. But we don't really know how. <laughs> I love how crush-centric some of these chapters are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Everyone has a crush on, like, Ron has a crush on Floor and Victor. <laughs> Hagrid has a crush on Madame Maxime. Harry has a crush on Cho. Cho, yep. Hermione's the only level-headed one here. Because in the, this chapter opens... <laughs> looks oh, don't get her. I have, yeah. Well, <laughs> she does favor Cedric quite yeah, a bit. I looks know. are getting her. And even the reference to Lockhart. Lockhart yeah, I was yeah. like, she, and she's I'm glad. Totally I think it was Ron right who called her out. Yeah. I love that. that cause yes. Yeah. She was kind of like, you guys are being silly. And they're like, except you've been just as silly. Yeah. Lockhart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's so great. <laughs> Ron is so funny in these chapters. He's having a rough stretch of chapters, to be honest. But it opens. It says, oh, I haven't got a single quill on me. Do you think he'd sign my hat and lipstick? It was just like, girls are saying this on the side. Really? Hermione said loftily as uh, the girls passed. Not squabbling over... 
uh, the lipstick. I'm getting his autograph if I can, said Ron. You haven't got a quill, have you, Harry? He's like right <laughs> along with these girls wanting to get yep. Victor Crumb's autograph, which I kind of respect and that I think it's kind of funny. You would do it. Yeah. Who is the most famous person you've got their autograph from or got a selfie with? In this book? No. Oh. <laughs> Who would be the fame, most famous oh, person? Gracious, what? that's funny. <laughs> that is so funny. I mean, Harry, obviously, but have you guys ever gotten a famous autograph for someone? Yeah, I prefer to play it cool and not ask for the autograph yeah. or picture <laughs> because it kind of objectifies the person. Yeah. And I think there's that part of me that would rather have like uh, more An of a interaction. genuine interaction where it feels not like fan and celebrity. Um, cool. But yeah, I feel like in the city, I've had a bunch of those. Yeah, I think one of my favorites was Adam Sandler um, because I was walking through Times Square and I like turned around and there was like a bunch of hubbub and photographers and stuff. And I was looking at them and I'm backing up and I bumped into him. No and, way. Uh, and I like turn around I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry. And he's like, oh, a little early to be drinking. And, you know, it was like 830 a.m. And he was dressed classic Adam Sandler with the um, basketball shorts, basketball shorts <laughs> big baggy t-shirt. And then like off he goes. It was just like a funny little interaction. And I was like, oh, my. All right. Have a good day. And he's like, yep. Um, if any of you know something. Adam Sandler who are listening to this, go <laughs> see if he remembers this. Because <laughs> um, they always had the celebrities at... Um, Good Morning America. Yeah. So whenever people would go in and out, that was when I was always going on you know, my commute in New York. And uh, yeah, that was just a funny time running into the randos That's over so there. so funny. Adam Sandler, what a classic. Yeah. Mm. Have you guys met anybody famous? Yeah, I've met Britney Spears <gasps> in Walmart what? story. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you tell it on the podcast? I don't remember. No. Tell, tell it again. It again. No. Yeah. Uh, tell it I was again. young. <laughs> I was younger. Maybe, well, maybe like 12. Oh, I was in Disney. And we went to Walmart, my family and I, and my brother came running up to my sister and I, um, after we were in a different store, he was like, you got to come inside. Britney Spears is here. If it's not her, it's her twin. We were like, okay, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so we follow him and we found her. She was again, dressed classic Britney Spears. Like this was in her prime where she had the hat on the, the two braids, the belly shirt, you know, the like low so pants, bizarre. whatever. And we were like, oh my gosh, that's definitely her so i have my little disney um autograph book and a winnie the pooh pen <laughs> oh and my brother my goodness. of course he's convincing me he's like if you don't go get her autograph you're gonna regret it forever i'm like why does it have to be me i don't want to do it so we followed her around the store poor thing She's paying, and I finally went up to her. And I was like, are you Britney Spears? She was really nice. She was like, yeah, it's me. So she signed Aww, my little book, and then she cute. was gone. That's really cute. Wow. Yeah. She didn't have any bodyguards, like, Mm-mm. with her? Nope. Yeah. I guess that just... was back in I mean, she was her. with somebody, career. but yeah. Oh. Well, hmm. yeah, and when people weren't crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> or hid their craziness yeah, a little bit. I mean, the second I went they up to her, crazy. though, she was gone. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> like oh, it's it. starting. Yeah. Yep. That was cool. Most of the people that I've met have just been athletes. Like I haven't, I can't think of a, like a celebrity or anything like that that I've met. Um, but I've met, you guys probably don't even know who this is, Andre Pirlo. That does sound familiar. <laughs> He's a really famous a Italian soccer flat. player. <laughs> One of the most famous Italian soccer players of all time. And I met him at a, um, after a game he was playing. He was, once he came to America and, and when he was like retired, like all those pros do. Yep. And lived out their last days in America getting paid crazy amounts their of money. Last and, uh, days. Cool. <laughs> really, their last days as like pros. Because they can oh. extend their career yeah, extra American years. Soccer, like, they can never cut it in Europe. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I met him after and talked to him for a little bit. Like a game he played in. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's, that's um, really cool. And then I've, uh, um, do you guys know the name Freddie Adu? Yes, that, that one does I know. sound yeah. familiar. He was like the up and coming coolest American soccer player of all time when we were oh, kids. Oh, because of Eddie. And you might have been there because I played soccer with your brother. Yeah. We played on the field right next to him. So we finished our game and I remember oh. we were looking at and people were like, that's Freddie Adu right there because he was just an up and coming star. And so like yeah. I knew soccer a that lot more than I do back familiar. then. And we were like, there he is. There he is. It was oh, pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Um, that's pretty funny. But I, don't, I, don't, I haven't met like too many really, really famous people to be honest. Yeah, my favorite was Gavin DeGraw. I love him as a singer. Nice. You then, uh, again was, in Florida. What was that interaction? Was it just like a meet and um, greet? So where were we? She attacked we him. Down, 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 down. <laughs> <laughs> Tackled him, him to the ground. Him, followed him a little bit too. No, he was um, singing at the House of Blues, and we were going to the concert. 
and we randomly found him just walking around downtown Disney. And we were like, oh my gosh. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So we like debated going up to him and then we did. He was so nice to talk to us for a while. We took pictures and then later on, like shortly after, he saw us again and he was like, hey guys. No, no way. way. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Did we hang out after the concert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen, but wow. yeah, it was cool. I love, I love like cool celebrity interactions right? like that rather mm. than just like a grumpy one or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And a bad one. Yeah. I used to do this thing where when they were filming in New York, like I would see where they were filming and then I would go into the city and then sneak on set so I could try and be in the movies. So uh, I happened to do that for two Ben Stiller movies. Um, I'm not visible in either movie. In one of them, uh, they cut my scene. Ugh. Oh, come on. Um, How dare they? It was a camera blur, but I was there for the filming, which is cool. Um, that's cool. Can you that's can so you see cool. yourself in the blur? Like you personally, I paused you like, it. That, that was, was on um, Tower Heist. Yeah, I remember that. And one. so because you and Kyle like, did that or something. Yeah, and I, I had um because whenever I would do that, I would wear like um non branded clothing because that's what all the extras wear. So I'm trying to like pretend I'm an extra. Um, and so I was able to get away with it. But then Kyle got booted because he was wearing a Ranger shirt, and Trevor got <laughs> yes. booted because he had something else. So they knew he was not a part of yeah. it. Um, but I thought that was fun. And then for Walter Mitty, that was. Oh, that was great. Oh, if you were on for Walter Mitty, oh that would have been goodness. so cool. Because um, it's in the movie, he jumps into this building and like saves. Yeah. I forget. I think it's a dog in the movie. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, they were shooting other options where he was saving people. So he was like carrying people out of the no building. Way. And then I'm in the background, like eating a muffin that I just got at this deli. And I'm just like, no <laughs> <way>. <laughs> oh, that was so <laughs> And cool. I would have been visible in that one. But then they went with the dog instead of the people. How or maybe cool it was the other way around. to see that. Like, oh, there's Danny just eating a muffin in the background. <laughs> ben Stiller saving people. <laughs> yeah. I just, I think the, the filming stuff is just fascinating. So it's fun yeah. to yeah. be a part of. But I was an extra on Law & Order. You were? No really? way. SVU. What? what? My college roommate. I forgot until you brought this up. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> she like knew the director. They were friends. So we went. We had to dress a certain way yep, yep. and bring like different outfit, like different shirts to like change. And I met on um, the two, the two actors, the guy that was sexiest Whoa. man. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yes. No. Oh, I talked to him. Sexiest man in the, in the yeah. world. And then the, what's her name? <laughs> the female, I, the I actress. I can't remember her name. That's so I don't cool. Actress, but. Mar Mar something with an M. But um, That's yeah, so I met cool. them. And then I was an extra and I was doing the same thing, pausing it and like zooming. You could like <laughs> kind of see me because I knew where I was, yep. but like you can't really tell. <laughs> Oh no, that we was gotta so find that episode. Yeah. Upload it to Reddit. Yeah, seriously, yeah. <laughs> oh. it looks like a screenshot and send it out to Reddit. Yeah, but, but it is so awkward being an extra, really, because it's like you have to pretend you're talking. So like these yes. crowded bar scenes and everything, you're talking to strangers, but you're not talking. You're just standing there like mouthing everything because mm. you have to be quiet. And I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. so strange. So. But that's, yeah, that's incredible. I forgot about that. That's a cool one. Yeah, it was fun. Man, it was you guys an all cool day celebrity interaction all event. Day, yeah. I got paid too. Nice, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so and fun. then because other actors that are like trying to make a name, they have like a resume or something, and they're yep. trying to get as many like yeah. extra like. Who's on Law and Order? <laughs> Can we find you on IMDb. <gasps> Whoa! Uh, you can sure. make a page. <laughs> Whoever thinks that I'm famous, a yeah. comedian, yeah. can find me on exactly. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's uh, really funny lines in these chapters too. One of my favorites that happens early on is, "What's that?" said Ron, pointing at a large dish of something, some sort of shellfish stew that stood beside a large steak and kidney pudding. Bullion base, said Hermione. Bless you, said Ron. <laughs> God, <laughs> yes. is such an idiot, but he's that so funny. funny. <laughs> um. Which uh, which students do you like more so far? Do you like the French Bobaton students or do you like the Durmstrang students more? French. Really? Yeah. They're Why? like sly and yeah. like sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And it's sexy. True. Perfect. Hmm. And Florida's part of Vila, so... Yep. Ron, can I keep her eyes Works. off her? You guys be can drooling all over. Her? <laughs> it's so funny. I like the Darmstrang students because they're warmth. They're, they, I mean, they're with the Slytherin, so it kind of takes away from that a little yeah. bit. But they seem like they're look, looking around the castle with wonder and awe, and they're like, this yep. is really cool. Mm. 
the Bobaton students are more sexy. They're like, this is beneath us. I this know. Ugly yeah, yeah, I probably yeah, wouldn't yeah. like them, but I just find them entertaining. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely They're very entertaining. polite. Yeah. Standing up when I think it was when Madame oh, Maxine yeah. came in uh, yeah. and waiting right. for her to sit down. Like stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I like that. But they just feel arrogant. And I'm like, eh. Yeah. Wait, are all true. of the Bobaton people uh, girls and all the Durmstrang people guys? Mm-mm. It's a mixture. Yeah. Okay. Why would you ask that? It just kind of felt like You're it, like right the way there. they had talked uh, about it at first. Yeah. I think in my head, I was feeling like it just felt like all of them were female for whatever mm-hmm. reason. Yeah. Um, it does have that feel. And uh, I'll spoil one thing in the movies for you. In the movies, they do make that distinction. In Bobatons, it's all girl students. In Durmstrang, it's all boy students. Hmm. But it's not that in the books. In the books, it's a mix of boy and girl. Oh, interesting. So in Bobaton, mm-hmm. at least specifically in Bobaton, hmm. there's uh, boys and girls. Um, and they're all really upset when Floor wins. And in Durmstrang, there's there's mostly guys. I think it, it kind of feels like that in these chapters. I was trying to think if there were any girls. girls that like came yeah. up. They mo- one must have been mentioned, yeah. but I don't know if it explicitly mentioned it. But Durmstrang is a school that uh, has both guys okay. and girls. Nice. But maybe or maybe because like... of Madame Maxime, I just kind of was thinking there were the girls in the mm. woods that time, and then we know Floor, and I heard another girl or two mentioned, and I thought maybe it's a girls' school. But do you think it could have been Floor in the woods in uh, the the? Triwizard Tournament? Or in that, theory, not, but the, the person in the woods felt up. small and scared, and yeah. I don't think Floor would have been. Hmm. I feel like she would have been uh, confident. So you're she would impre- have been leading it. Yeah, what's your impression of Floor, and what's your impression of... Uh, we'll talk about this, I guess, later, too, of Crumb. Mm. I feel like I don't have much on Floor. Mm. There's something about Crumb that just really like, rubs me the wrong way. Like yeah. I said in the previous huh. podcast, I don't know. I'm skeptical of him, but I kind of like him. Like something about it. Like he feels like rough around the edges, but I, I feel like I kind of like him. Mm. I'm not sure why. And that could change. Like I'm still skeptical. It's because he's a guy. Um, yeah, I like guys. I don't like girls. So, not, you know. Jim thought. K kind of portrays him as like an emo. <laughs> take that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using that as a snippet. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so um, again there's all sorts of funny lines in these chapters like this is one of my favorite little paragraphs where it goes excuse me are you wanting the base it was the girl from bobaton who had laughed during dumbledore's speech she had finally removed her mufflers a long sheet of silvery blonde hair almost fell to her waist she had large deep blue eyes and very white even teeth ron went purple he stared up at her opened his mouth to reply but nothing came out except a faint gurgling noise <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah, I have this in here. <laughs> pushing the dish toward the girl. You have finished with it? Yeah, oh. said Ron breathlessly. Yeah, it was excellent. The girl picked up the dish, carried it carefully off to Ravenclaw table, and Ron was still googling at her as uh, at the girl as though he had never seen one before. Harry started to laugh. It sounded. Uh, the sound seemed to jog Ron back to his senses. She's a Vila, he said hoarsely to Harry. And he's right, but he like uh, he, he doesn't right. know that at the moment. Uh, mm. Ron's in, little intuition is pretty interesting here. You know what happened there? I was sitting at the Ravenclaw table and got really hungry again and sent her over to get the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, these stupid French people. Go get, go, go yeah. some food for me. <laughs> you guys don't eat anything, so. Um, how, what's your, do you guys, has your guys' opinions of Harry, Ron, and Hermione had a drastic change in these books? Or do you think they're all pretty much the same character that you kind of initially thought they were? drastically changed hmm. not necessarily even drastically but oh. what changes do you think um they've had in these books well ron changes i think the most mm. in mm. this chap well the next coming chapters in a way it's like he's finally had enough of yeah, harry he's fed up. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. he's yeah. hit his limit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i feel like we're right on the cusp of real growth from all of them mm-hmm. i feel like hermione's ahead of schedule which makes sense for a girl maturing faster than these kids. Um, Harry and Ron still have some serious growth to do. But Hermione feels like she's she's just very aware of people's emotions. And even Ron, like when she was talking to Harry about Ron, she was very in tune with what he might be feeling, yeah. which I thought was great. Like that feels like growth. Like yes. I feel like Hermione from previous books wouldn't have picked up on all of that. It would have been maybe more like academic, um, but her emotional intelligence is really mm. um, improving. Yeah, that was fantastic when they were walking around the lake eating their toast. Hermione was yeah. essentially explaining the situation perfectly. 
Because one of my questions that I had to delete was, what do you think Ron's going through? And I'm like, oh, Hermione just explained it perfectly. He's like, <laughs> he's jealous of you, Harry. Like, don't you see it? You're stupid if you can't see this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I know that I thought that was a really sweet, um, yeah. like, discussion that she had with Harry. Yeah. But Harry has to, like, he's got to be shaken up a little bit. Yeah. I think the stuff with um, Hedwig and not, like, he's not treating Hedwig that well. And he's not aware <laughs> of, like ron's feelings and emotions he's just a little self-focused he's trying to control things and like yeah. oh i shouldn't have told serious stuff i feel like he needs to like hit an actual breaking point of trusting people and caring for others like in moments he cares for others but like only big moments mm -hmm. it's the little day-to-day -day moments where like he's got to give ron a chance to shine he's got to like be thinking about his pet while he's not using the pet for his own yeah. you know things so i feel like he just needs to Figure that out a little bit. He's getting there. Yeah. He's got to work those things out in his head. And it's curious when you think I'll have a breakthrough or not for any of that kind of stuff. I do love Hermione. Like her, one, maybe one of my favorite Hermione moments at this point is when I hear you. We're not even there yet. It's like the next chapter. So we'll probably, we'll probably won't even hit that because we're, we're uh, we got 40 minutes left. But um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Kristen, did you say what growth What from the people? Did you see growth oh, from any of them? Same. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> We're good. Mm. We can keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> On the front of the book, who is it? Yeah, yeah. Which one's which? That is Cedric. That so. is Crumb. Come on, yeah. the nose and the bushy brows. <laughs> bushy brows. <laughs> right, am I it? clear to look at this now? Oh, no spoilers. I'm trying to see your mom. It's right in my lap. Jen the detective looking at these things. Wait. It's great. It doesn't give anything which away, at least. This oh, is Cedric's Cedric. on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the depiction Wait, that Jim K has one? of all of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not that obvious. Yeah, it this is. This is the hot one, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it is to me. <laughs> <laughs> what, can I see the back, too? Yeah, oh, it has the gosh. carriage. Ma oh, Madame cool. Maxine's yeah, carriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so oh, funny. That's quite it a wing we fun. got there. I that, knew she was uh, a Vila. I didn't know who she was. But, I can't yeah. wait. To, I'm gonna after this podcast. I'm gonna show you Jim K's because he has a great depiction of it. Um, yeah, you like, have to start bringing that back. Have it. Oh yes. The his uh, <laughs> yeah. This maybe this is ridiculous for me to say, but his depiction of Floor yes. is very attractive. And his depiction of Cedric is very attractive too. <laughs> and uh, and Cedric's a bit more dark than he is in the cover of this book. Cedric um, like floor romance on floor. Mm. Um, <laughs> or like dark like looking. Like demeanor. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, huh. Crumb is like emo. <laughs> He's oh, great really? though. I love it. I'll show you guys after. Um, I'll like throw it on the subreddit mm. too. So there's your plug. If you haven't joined our subreddit, join our subreddit to see those pictures. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, nice. There is a magical binding contract that the goblet constitutes. Um, do you think this is good? No. Do you think this is legal? Do you think this is smart? I don't like it. But like, what happens if they don't do it? That's, well, that's what, what I, I was thinking. Do you die? <laughs> like, what, what happens? Yeah. Or are you right. forced? Yeah, like, what? magic just pulls you back and like just, throws yeah, you back. Yeah, you just get in. like apparated instantly <laughs> into oh, the gosh. contest yeah. as soon as it begins. Well, that's what I don't understand. The age limit is now, but in the past they didn't. So, what? Thirteen-year-old kids can just like get sign a contract. Yeah. Magic contracts don't have like minor rules where parents have to consent or whatever it just seems so weird <laughs> and it's not even it's not even like they're signing one after it's like their consent is putting their yes. name dropping their name into the goblet of fire oh, wow. and then as soon as the goblet picks them that's the magical binding contract yep. you have to see this through at the end which is wild to me that you're letting high schoolers do this yep but like harry mm -hmm. had no way of saying no like this was like an accident yeah. he didn't put his name in and even was it Moody or Bagman was like the only one that should be complaining is Harry and he hasn't oh, said yeah. a word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, but what what happened? Like, what if he did say a word? Then is he out? Like, is he getting out from that? Or no, because he of this finding. And I feel like Dumbledore could have undone this. Like whoever built the goblet to begin yep. with, maybe that was years ago and took incredible time and a lot of wizards coming together. I don't know. But like someone could overpower it. And it felt so like systematic like oh someone probably created a fourth school with only one entrant i'm like really that's like this whole thing can be controlled by like creating another category it was only speculation maybe that's not mm -hmm. how they did it 
but it just felt a little bizarre. Like that's the workaround. This magical object can be like tricked like that. Felt weird. They put Elver Morney's name in there. Harry under Elver Morney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pride. Mm. Pride and Elver Morney there. <laughs> they didn't say his school until he tries name to graduate though, right? And they're like, you're not on the registry anymore. Yeah. It says you don't attend Hogwarts yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be wild. Yeah. yeah. How, I thought that was we'll that. break for a second here just to talk about that. How do you think Harry's name got in the Goblet of Fire? And then even on top of that, how has your perception of first chapter stuff changed do you think your theories are still right you know the yes. first chapter <laughs> do you like who do you think is uh, they're talking about um like him and wormtail what is this like job that they're trying to do how are they like what is going on in the first chapter has that changed who is like the really devoted servant to lord voldemort i think it's one of these characters that I don't know, like a remember I was saying like the mole, but now I'm not sure if it's the min, in the Ministry of Magic necessarily. Mm. I just somehow feel like either Crouch, Bagman, um, Kakarov, mm. and Crumb. I don't know why. I feel like mm. somehow they're all like, not all of them, but like one of the pairings has something to do with it. Mm. Yeah. But then it could be uh, Floor, the pretty one that distracts everyone. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's looks. true. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how his name got in there. It seems really strange. That's the part. I know it could have been during the night or something, but like, what? No, I'll let you finish. I just want to not well, forget. I just don't, like, wouldn't Dumbledore be watching? Yeah. Like, but he doesn't disrupt anything. Like yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't. micromanage anything. Yeah. So he kind of mm. like lets things play out. But like yeah. I know what you, what you're up to. But I'm gonna place my people there. That's why I like. Yeah, I you're feel right. like Moody is there because he's like, okay, he'll protect Harry because that's what Sirius said, and he can help teach them. Mm. So like I'm not gonna meddle with what's going on, but I'm gonna let my people be like around more often to be like protective yeah possibly i feel like then dumbledore must be okay with or even want harry in this tournament it, it's the only thing that i can feel like makes sense to let this all happen this way well, it's because, character building too i mean it is character building yeah <laughs> to certainly. the death that's a um, yeah can i um, say something before yes. i forget go ahead with uh, Kakarov is am I saying his Kakarov or, Kakarov, yeah. or whatever say however you want <laughs> <laughs> it's just so hard because I don't read it so like yeah, yeah. it's repeated from Jim Dale and I can't remember it um, anyways he was so um, what's the word I want when when um, they were upset that Harry became yeah. um, mm. the fourth one he was going so far being I don't know what the word is, but he was so upset that it felt as though like a fake. Like he's hmm. like, I need to act like this like a little too to extreme. show huh. you like overcompensating that like I'm so upset with everything going on. But like it felt like a cover up kind of thing to me. Interesting. That is interesting. Because he was so hmm. angry he about was. everything. So I don't know. I could be so far fetched. He's like, but we're not even competing it. in the next one. We need to <laughs> put, re-put it. And you're like, dude. We all know you put your you put Harry's name in the goblet. Yeah, yeah, because like it was, it just seemed so extreme hmm. to me. That's an interesting one. Yeah, it is. But also, <laughs> the part that was confusing to me is it said nobody under the age of seventeen could cross the line, but yeah. they threw it out there as a suggestion that another student could have just put his name in there, like, like Malfoy. Yeah. And then I'm just like, well, that's weird. No, he's so literally age. anyone who's over 17 can just write any name on a piece of paper yep. and walk over and put it in because that's a real simple solution to this whole thing. Um, Crumb. Yeah, it literally yeah. could have been any of those people like I don't know. Crumb's looking to show up Harry and he does it or some student we don't even know did it um, or any adult. Any person could have just put his name in there. And even if they didn't do some big old thing, we're making Harry like go to some other school. That was all speculation. Yeah. Um, they might have just put his name in there and the goblet spoke. Or McGonagall is really in a lot of debt because of her gambling oh, addiction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the over-under on Harry yeah, yeah. is perfect for him to get out crazy. of debt. crazy. <laughs> Someone's betting on it. That's why they put him in there. <laughs> um, my impression of the first chapter, I don't know the big grand plan stuff, but now 
as I'm reading, I'm thinking that the Tom Riddle who was dead in the house was um, Voldemort's dad. Hmm. I'm like, that's how I'm reading it. And I'm kind of set on that um, because I reread part of the second book, I think that was, where we heard that um, Lord Voldemort is Tom, or it's T.M. Riddle, which is Tom yeah. for his father, Marvolo for his grandfather. So then I'm like, all right, his father's name is Tom. I think that would just make the most yeah. sense. So I'm kind of reading it more straight that way. Um, so that it would be his grandparents and his father were killed in that house. And that's the one that he's now with Wormtail at. But I just don't know what the plan is. But all the vibes of this is that whatever the plan is, is happening at the Triwizard Tournament. Hmm. And it's Harry focused. And they're just trying to put Harry in a certain trap position somehow. Right. And that's what I was saying last time. But then I feel like you guys were all like, well, he could do it whenever. What do you mean? <laughs> really? No, I'm like, I'm like yeah. I, I know like, you're like, like Voldemort <laughs> can get him whenever. And I'm like, that's not what yeah. I'm saying. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's interesting. So do you think that this person is trying to get Harry to compete in the tournament because they think the events are going to kill him? Or do you think it's just like a long maze to get him, you know, get him killed some other way? I don't think they're trying to kill him. I Mm -hmm. think they're trying to do something to him. Like the whatever Voldemort is trying to do, like capture his power or like Hmm. I'm still I'm still have this idea in my head of like stealing wizards power, like whatever he he could do with other wizards if he wanted to, but then Wormtail was trying to suggest that. Like, can't we use someone else? And then he's like, no, it needs to be Harry. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's what this is. Something to like win him to the dark side or um, if he, if Voldemort left a piece of Harry in him or a piece of himself in Harry, although that wouldn't really make sense because then it couldn't be done with other wizards. Mm. I don't know, but I don't think they're trying to kill him yet. Although maybe yes. they are trying to decapitate him <laughs> since he did predict that about himself. <laughs> oh, no. Could he take could Voldemort like take over Harry's body though? Like just Well, he's ready to fight it. Moody taught him. Mm. Maybe not take over his body. I think I know what you mean, but I was thinking of the uh that curse. What's the Imperious? Imperious curse, yeah. Mm. But take over meaning like he's a parasite, like he did on um Man, names are escaping me. On the back yeah, of Quirrell. Quirrell, Quirrell's head. Wow, yeah. I got Quirrell a name right. Nice, Jen. I'm becoming a newer <laughs> fan here. Excellent. <laughs> hmm. But Harry could resist if he tried. And then, and maybe, because maybe, maybe the wizard who... Because if we're, if we're saying, and if this theory that we have that there's a piece of Voldemort in Harry, maybe he'd eat more, be more easily able to sway him because... Uh, maybe yeah. Voldemort can understand his mind more or maybe even read his mind or something like that. Hmm. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Um, but on a happier note, Dumbledore is great in these chapters. I really love him. <laughs> There's this yeah. line where uh, when Fred and George um, jumped in the in the Goblet of Fire, they crossed the line or Fred did it and they got <laughs> blown funny. back and they have beards. So the entrance hall rang with laughter. Even Fred and George joined in <laughs> once they had gotten to their feet and taken a good look at each other's beards. I did warn you, said a deep, amused voice, and everyone turned to see Professor Dumbledore coming out of the Great Hall. Um, he surveyed Fred and George, his eyes twinkling. I suggest both of you go to Madame Pomfrey. She's already tending to Miss Fawcett of Ravenclaw and Mr. Summers of Hufflepuff, both of whom decided to age themselves up a little too. Though I must say, neither of their beards is anything like as fine as yours. Yeah, that was so great. <laughs> Such a great guy. I love yeah, this guy so, so much. Good. I think in the um, the way he, Jim Dale says it too, when really? Dumbledore is like the amused uh, yeah. phrasing, it was so good. Like the way he worded it. He's such a good or voice actor, announced, Jim Dill. Whatever pronounced it. Um, how do you guys? How is your? Has your opinion of Dumbledore changed at all? Do you like him more? Um, do you find him more trustworthy? Um, how do you just like him in general? What are your general thoughts on Dumbledore? I feel like he's more fun or like mm. more playful. And I lo- I know we're not there yet, but I love the way he talks to. Um, Skeeter, uh, yeah. Reader, Skeeter. Yeah. The, oh my gosh. It's such it was a good so interaction. Good. That timing of when he got there. Yeah. Like, it's great. Um, trusting. I feel like I didn't get anything that could 
sway that opinion. Hmm. I just like his one-liners. Yeah. He's so good at those. And like he doesn't get upset. Right. At like anything. Yeah. He's so, so thinking, level-headed. With the, right. With Fred and George, it was yeah. like he found it fun. Yeah. Like he knew they were going to do that. Yeah. He knew they were going to be kids. He knows do everything. He's just like, yeah. he's like, oh, you look funny. You look and great. we're seeing a lot more of him in this book too, even just his one-liners. Like uh, one of my favorite ones is in the feast when he's like, oh, to tell a joke, I did hear a really good one about a hag in a bar or something like that. And <laughs> yeah. uh, McGonagall's like, ahem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he stops. He's just uh, like an oddball, but in the best sort of way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's so good. I think he's... I'm enjoying it more because of that, though, too, like his character. Yeah. He de- he definitely does make it a really enjoyable and fun. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, he says this line. The Hogwarts champion, he called, is Cedric Diggory. No, said Ron loudly, but nobody heard him except Harry. The uproar <laughs> from the table next to him was too great. Every single Hufflepuff had jumped to his or her feet, <laughs> screaming and stamping as Cedric made his way past them, grinning broadly, and headed off toward the chamber behind the teacher's table. Indeed, the applause for Cedric went on so long that it was some time before Dumbledore could make himself heard again. I'm not going to lie. This part makes me like emotional because I'm like a Hufflepuff, a proud Hufflepuff. I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) I knew you were going to do that. I'm like, these two are like, yeah. I would have been cheering for him for the entire, oh, I would have been jealous of him maybe a little bit because I would want to go on the try with the tournament. I see you doing like, you know, football players a touchdown and then do that the dance thing or whatever like the end zone. That's what I see the two of you doing. I think um, Hogwarts does not do a good job at being supportive. Yeah. I, like, it's fine to have your little house squabbles, but, like, I still don't care that deeply about the houses. Hmm. I'm like, that's fine when it's just you, but when other schools are present, you got to be unified. You got to yeah. be like, we are all Hogwarts, and this is now our champion. But instead, they're just, like, booing each other and being petty. I'm like, get over yourselves. This is now your boy, and you cheer for him <laughs> yeah. in front of these other schools. You tell them, Danny. And so, I, like, as I'm reading this, I'm just like, why are they being so, like, weird? Except you're a little biased because you're a Hufflepuff. Well, so <laughs> true. And so, uh, I understand that. Cool. Like, me. I was ready to cheer for another team. I would have had a hard time with uh, a Slytherin. A Slytherin, yeah. But still, I was kind of like, oh, man. It just felt weird. Yeah. Um, because they go on to just be, like, weird with each other, and everyone's hating on Harry and whatever. I felt like it was... Yeah, just just interesting. But I thought there should have been a pep talk before all this. Mm. What a pep rally? Yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah. or a speech saying like, <laughs> like okay, guys. yeah, pep like just kind of like so fun at yeah, the Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Oh my goodness! And like there were so many stuff. changes. I feel like a move <laughs> from Dumbledore would be to say <laughs> so cool. the house competitions are not happening this year. Tri Wizard is the tournament. Yeah. We are a school. Yeah. We can still have our houses, but there will not be points for houses. We're not doing Quidditch matches. This is a year for just the Tri Wizard mm-hmm. tournament. Yeah. You know, like. But then teachers lose house. all their power to. Right. That's their only way of <laughs> yeah. discipline or whatever. Like something about it. I feel like it would have been nice to toss it for a year, but maybe that's not practical. Yeah. They care too deeply about their houses. Yeah. But they're also like middle school and high schoolers. What do you expect? Yeah, I guess you're right. But they're about to die, so they better mature quickly. They're not supposed to die. That's not the goal of this. Like, (laughs) it seems like it does happen. Like, games oddly often. I don't know. Hmm. How do you like Cedric being the Hogwarts champion? I feel like I found it weird that he put his name in because I feel like he doesn't care about that stuff. Like, I don't, hmm. he just seems hmm. like the interaction with his dad, remember, and like the yeah. whole Quidditch conversation, yeah. it was like, dad, like, no, that's not like what happened. Yeah. So but you I, think he doesn't care about what glory or money? I guess maybe. Th- yeah. That was my thing. It was like, yeah. he kind of wants to be in the shadows. Like he is good and naturally talented, but like, mm. I don't want the fame. Well, maybe his dad made him but or he's doing it to like mm. for his father's approval. Yeah. Right, sad. he does like it in that specific instance with the Quidditch. It just wasn't fair. He's a man since of justice. Hap- yeah, oh. since what happened with Harry. Maybe. I guess I didn't mm. read into but that. But he, he only wants the glory if it's earned. Yeah. yeah. And that's why yeah. I didn't feel like he's like, I didn't earn it. If Harry mm. was there, maybe I, we wouldn't have won. Yeah. 
and even if he did it, that. even if he did earn it he would still be humble about it like when he mm. gets up to me he has a lot of humility when he gets up like he's excited and all the hufflepuffs are thrilled about him but he just kind of like grins and goes off into the back room like mm. he still has that humility to him yeah but i think yeah. he definitely is the sort that wants it earned like um I kind of resonate with that a little bit. Like, I don't like just random celebrations. Like, I'm someone who doesn't like my birthday all that much because I'm like, what did I do? Celebrate my mom, you know? But whenever <laughs> I was like playing soccer or something like that and I got my name in the paper for something that I did, it was like cool because I feel like I earned that. And I was like, okay, here we go. Mm. Um, you so didn't I, earn your life. Got it. Good to know. But I am very proud. <laughs> I am very proud of Cedric being Hogwarts champion here. Just to say that, mm. Hufflepuff oh. finally getting some of their glory. We have a... Uh, your, yeah, your school is finally announced. <laughs> um, there That's was a line from the previous chapter where... Um, of course. Fred and George... Well, I just forgot about it because, again, to get back to the house <laughs> elves thing. Back. Just because yeah. we haven't addressed the house elves thing. And that's like a continuing story through the whole book. Yeah. So I feel like we got to touch on it in each podcast a little mm. bit. Um, because I keep going back and forth. Do I want them to remain slaves or not? <laughs> and I think it was That's interesting so that Fred and George are like basically saying it's no big deal. They're running the kitchen. It's great. We steal food. And Hermione is like, how dare you? There, she says, That's because they're uneducated and brainwashed. <laughs> and I'm just like, that feels a bit much and yeah. kind of arrogant for Hermione to say. Yeah. She hasn't even spoken to one. Yeah. Mm, How, yeah. like, for her to assume that they're brainwashed and uneducated, like, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, that is prideful and arrogant. She has no idea what she's talking about. I like that she wants to stick up for them. That's great. But don't put them down. Maybe mm. they are very educated and they know exactly what they're doing. And this is by choice. She doesn't even know the real story about the Hogwarts, like, house elves. I think she should talk to Dumbledore or McGonagall or whatever um, and figure it out. But I can't tell which direction this is going. Will there be a House Elves uprising that Hermione leads? Or is this just like a weird subplot that isn't really going to go anywhere? I don't know. But I feel like at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm thinking the House Elves can keep changing the sheets, tending the fires, and cooking the food. I'm down. <laughs> but I'm open to changing my mind. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I think uh, <laughs> I, I definitely think she does show. I think politician. her because she's so brilliant. She probably does have a aptitude to show a little bit of um, um, arrogance in her brilliance, mm. where she just knows she's smarter than a lot of other people. So yeah, she kinda that's knows, true. She, she feels like she knows what's right for yeah. them, which to some extent that's a good thing. Um, but also, you need to let people make their own decisions and um, mm. and like be able to fight for themselves. Yeah, um, it's, it, I'm interested to keep this discussion up and to see how you guys like how she goes about trying to uh, promote SPEW, Society for the Promotion of Elvish Welfare. <laughs> and that's a great, I can get behind that. Yeah. We want welfare. Yeah. But like, let's get them involved in this whole <laughs> yeah, thing for sure. before you get a little yeah, crazy. Yeah, she should have gone down and yeah. like, hey guy, the yeah. twins, bring me down there. I'd love yeah, to talk seriously, to them. Yeah, seriously, that would have been such a good moment. Like, yeah. great, let's go steal food together. I'd love to talk to them and eat food, like, and then just go down there. How lovely would that be? Just going down and hanging out with house yeah. elves, having like tea and cookies, you know? Oh, I love that. <laughs> or even just wait by the fire and then like yeah. when they come to tend the fire, like talk to one of them. It just feels like at least become their friends, like do something. Yeah. yeah. What's her motivation for this? Yeah, because the elves might be pissed off at Hermione. Yes. Like stop yeah. disrupting mm -hmm. our thing. This is what we've been doing. We like it. This is their livelihood, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I could see a little. Hermione's getting a little fight with uh, some of the house elves over there. <laughs> she gets mm. kicked out. Her bed's never made. She doesn't get <laughs> yeah. food. Oh, whoa. <laughs> They've got a lot of power. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. I'm kind of wondering if goblins used to be like house elves, and then the goblin uprising is when they said, We're done. We want to mm. be free. Because well, there were a lot of, of goblin bank. uprisings. And now, yeah, now they got a lot of power. Maybe they were even running the banks before, but it was as servants. Yeah, less. Um, That's why purpose. they're so mean. Are they so mean? So grumpy. I don't know. They're grumpy, at least. I guess. <laughs> at least in the first movie, they're grumpy because they yeah, you're grumpy. right. You're they're right. all like, "Does Mister Harry Potter have his key?" Yeah. <laughs> and Hagrid's like, "Yeah, I got it here. Relax, dude. Yeah, chill." <laughs> and they're portrayed that way in Universal. Yeah. 
grumps. When we Ooh. wait in the line. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> when you're waiting in line, Gringotts, like there, mm-hmm. there wait is. Wait in line at Gringotts? Yeah. And For there one are of the goblins? rides. Huh. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to go, guys. Yeah, so wait, wait, like people in I know, costume or again, been. I've been when they like First. it was the second year I think they started it. So the only mm. thing they had done is they changed the castle and they changed the roller coaster from the dueling dragons to like whatever it was, whatever it is now. I forgot what it is, but they have barely just done that. So the castle mm. and a little bit of Hogsmeade was available. Like you could try butter beer, but we didn't we didn't do that. And they were Did building you see all the, the other dragon stuff. or anything mm-hmm. in. Diagon nope. Alley. Didn't see any of that? They oh built that after. Oh my gosh, it's so, so good. good! And yeah. I didn't even know what I was walking in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't agree. You've yeah. been? No. What? No. It You've opened been. my senior I, year. I did go, but I didn't do any rides. Oh my gosh! I just tried beer. And I. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it opened there, my senior year down there, and my brother and I wanted to go so bad, and it just never happened. Huh. There's another. We need. Yeah, we we have a lot of places. We need to go to Loch Ness just to make sure. Just to make sure. Out. Yeah. There is another place that is season um, two. It's probably yeah. <laughs> traveling Travel tales. Adventures. That'd be so fun. Yeah. There it is. Uh, I just read this the other day on Twitter. Um, it's probably the ultimate Harry Potter mecca, and I cannot tell you what it is. Um, <laughs> of course. But they were considering moving this location because it's kind of like a hidden location that is like very under the radar. Huh. Um, and. People go there for a specific reason, um, and they were considering moving this location um, because it's like not, it's kind of off the beaten track a little bit, Mm. and they didn't like how populated it was becoming because of Harry Potter um, searchers. So they were considering moving this location, but they're holding off right now, which I think is great because when we we got to get to it before it moves. Even if they move it, I know something can be moved. He's always like doing this to us. No, I like it. It's a teaser. It's something they haven't done yet. You cannot know so this. So like some event of a future Let me know. book or movie. <laughs> yeah, I could know either. I think you'll know. Let I think, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm going to harass you until you tell me. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> we can make this as a, like a, as a, um, as a quick little teaser for everyone. If you know what this place is, what's the ultimate Harry Potter mecca for any, any Harry Potter listener watching even like on the stream if right. you can have any guesses what do you think it would be because right now know? king's cross is the only answer. thing that we i can think of that's like a defined <laughs> real life location that we could go to because everything else is even kind of like, like vague ideas thing. yeah yeah but that's that all thing and in saw? some ways that might I be forget. the mecca oh because i saw yeah when yeah. um on september 1st yeah. they do a whole thing at the time that it's supposed yeah, to yeah. leave that was in our group chat right yeah yeah that was oh, cool yeah. So I, so know, I mind, that's like the closest go. thing to a mecca that it could be, um, but obviously that can't be moved. So something in a future movie or book must take place at a real world location we can visit. <laughs> and the fact say, that it's off the beaten trail makes yeah, it even more enticing. Yep. yep. Oh yeah, so it can't be that. Yeah, I can't wait to show you guys pictures of this one. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> yes, it's so good. Anyway, how do you guys like um, <laughs> Harry being in the tournament? <laughs> How do we like it? Because I mean, this is such a good line too. Her writing is really shining in these in this book. I think I think she's getting so much better of a descriptor. Descriptor. She's automatically it seemed Dumbledore reached out a long hand and seized the parchment. He held it out and stared at the name written upon it. Mm. There was a long pause during which Dumbledore stared at the slip in his hands, and everyone in the, in the room stared at Dumbledore. Then Dumbledore cleared his throat and read out, "Harry Potter." That's how the t- chapter ends. Oh my gosh, so mm. good! What are your thoughts about Harry in the tournament? We talked about this before, but who, do you have any other theories on who could have put his name in? Do you have like a top three suspects. Hmm. Bagman, Crawford. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I even just said. It's called Crockpot. <laughs> yeah, Crockpot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that name, Crockpot. Crumb. <laughs> Crumb, maybe? Those are my three right now. I like it, okay. Who else is around there? <laughs> Snape. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Just a mess with him? <laughs> That'd be great. And then maybe Snape has a potions thing that they have to do. Mm. And he was kind of training them for it without them even knowing. Wait, like Snape wants them to be good at it? Like, I'm just throwing this out there that like uh, the okay. Triwizard Tournament, he, there's a potion section. And like this whole time he was trying to get them to do the antidote. 
Oh, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's kind of... or... Mm. Ooh, or... Let's hear it. I was just thinking, maybe something happens in the Triwizard Tournament, and the antidote that Snape was having them all learn is used by Harry or... Ah, so he oh. really has pride in the school and wants them to win. Wants the school to win. You know, like maybe that is... Because you were saying that the professors probably know... Yeah. The different things. So maybe he was trying to teach. That is maybe possible. Maybe that is also why they were doing the crash course too. Like, But they, they were too young, so they're not so... Whatever. But also, <laughs> I, well, I guess in my mind, going. if Snape is helping Harry get through, it's only for bad motives. Like what I'm mm-hmm. thinking is if he's helping him with potions... It's only because he knows the potions are used in the first or the second trial and he needs Harry to get through those because the bad stuff happens in the third trial. Hmm. Like that's kind of my mindset. We're like, I'm, I'm not trusting any of that stuff, but I'm assuming the teachers do know what the challenges are. But then I'm also thinking like Snape was just teaching this and like it just was a coincidence. That oh, like, coincidence. Okay. Like Harry knows this and maybe helps with something in the tournament. Hmm. There's no such thing as coincidence. <laughs> whatever not in these books <laughs> not in these no, books you, you're right huh i am just so curious what these challenges are and they gave hints about like what they are in a vague idea of yeah. like what they're going to be testing these kids on and that they're going to be long drawn out things but i am just so curious yeah wait who did you think put his name in uh, all the people you said at first is what i was thinking like yeah. crumb or um crouch bagman um crockpot <laughs> I feel like one of those guys did, but um, I honestly wasn't. I'm not convinced. I, I it could just as easily be someone we don't know yet. You know, like Wormtail snuck into the school or something. Yeah. Is the Marauders map around? What whatever happened to that thing? Sirius has it, or no? Sorry, uh, uh, Harry, Harry has it has because it, right? Lupin gave it back yeah. to. That's what I thought. I'm just end. surprised it hasn't come up yet because yeah. if I was Harry all night it? long, I'd be yeah. looking at that I goblet know, of fire right. and seeing who's putting names in, who's doing whatever, and that now you've got so all these smart. big people. And to be honest, like after a rat has been around 13 years and as a person, I'd have this Marauders map out every night, just checking on things, <laughs> yes. just scoping it out. Like, is Ron you know, sleeping like, with any other strange man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because <laughs> like, all these strange people coming to the school, like, people just might be using fake names or yeah. whatever. Like, I would just be looking at all of these new arrivals with like a little bit of caution. But it seems like it hasn't come up, and I'm surprised. It doesn't mean he didn't use it, yeah. but it, it wasn't mentioned at least. Um, this is Harry we're talking about. Yeah, right. But I, he's like so curious about everything. This is like the ultimate curiosity. You can just whip this thing out, read about everything. Yeah, it's oh like an goodness. inside scoop on all this. Like what's Moody up to when Moody and Neville go off and then like Moody's giving the weird thing to uh, Crockpot. Yeah. And like, <laughs> did they really go back to the ship or are they doing other funky things in the dungeon? Honestly, you weird. know, like people... <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> Do you know how people like they'll right before bed they'll just be on their phones for like yes. an hour? I would be on the Marauders map for an hour, exactly. Just like checking out, like oh, the, yep. you know, Draco finally went to sleep. You know, who's snooping around the castle? Show what's what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so where, crazy. Where's so floor? Crazy. You would but, be like, where's Floor? I'm gonna hate. Yeah. <laughs> what is Floor doing? Oh, she's walking to the kitchens. Oh, I'm gonna I take a little I stroll over to the kitchen. So yeah, yeah, like that. I just what can't believe it's snack? not being. <laughs> I will be floor snack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, well, yeah. well, we need to see that picture in the <laughs> Jim, uh, yeah, Jim K does a, such a good depiction of it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's what you're looking at. He does, two, he does two pictures and they're they're fantastic. The they're snapped fantastic. And, uh, so good. Floor. Oh, you just Jim. said you would be floor snack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if anyone's out there that looks like Floor, yeah. send me your <laughs> pictures oh, in and we'll have a whole... <laughs> oh my gosh, we'll have an episode of Harry Potter Bachelor. Yeah. Yeah. For John. We'll yeah. find some Cedrics for you guys. Oh boy. Yes. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> any any other ideas? Any other thoughts or feelings about these uh, these chapters? Because we're we gotta oh, we're God. ending right we're now. Oh, we gotta wrap up. Um, oh, I did think one other thing. So <laughs> when at the very end, this final page or second to last, when floor <laughs> is <chapter> selected. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we missed something in chapter one. It says two of the girls who had not been selected had dissolved into tears. And it could be a joke about French people being emotional or it could be like a lot of things. But my thought when I read this is that they're mourning for Floor. Huh. Oh. Like that they, they actually know more than we do about what's coming. And that this is almost like a bit of a, a sacrifice. Interesting. Um, my thoughts were about bigger, nefarious yeah, things going on yeah. where it was like, oh, wow, Floor is not going to come out of this because this is something she has to do in order to trap Harry or do something else or accomplish something greater. So when I first saw that, I was like, crying just seems a little too extreme. And it made me think bigger, dramatic things where I was like, ooh. Serious stuff is happening right here. Do you think Floor put in Harry Potter's name in? I'm not saying definitely or anything, but it's it is a possibility. <clears throat> yeah, um, and the That's fact fine. that they were crying just made me think the whole school might know more than we think they do. Yeah, and that it was like maybe nobody else even put their names in. You know what I mean? Like it could have been like maybe a few people did or whatever, or maybe they knew it was going to be Floor all along and she's the only person from Bo Batons that put her name in and this is just like the reality hits them. Like, wow, we're going to lose our friend here or our wow. friend has to go through all of this stuff. <laughs> or they could just be dramatic or they're sad because they wanted to compete or it's just a nerve-wracking thing because they know it's going to be dangerous and Floor mm -hmm. is their friend. But um, Do you think, uh, so you would say out of all the champions right now, you think Floor might be the most likely to die um Possibly. the tears made me think that but yeah i think so um yeah probably I, jan if you had I'm, to make a guess mm. do you think that any of the champions are going to die i feel like it wouldn't be floor though you don't think so i think of her as not being the best wizard to be honest <clears throat> I love her confidence, though. Very confident, but being yeah. a Vila has filled her with confidence since her youth. <laughs> yeah. But is she actually good, hmm. or has she been skating by on her looks? Mm -hmm. Crumb does not have the looks. Although maybe it's good to be a little rough around the edges yeah. when you're at uh, Durmstrang. But I feel like he's better. Cedric's got the looks, too. Is he really good? He seems like he's pretty good. But, yeah. but Floor, I don't actually know if she's that good. Because she's a female? Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> That's the exact reason. But like we haven't seen her do uh, anything. And yeah. what have we seen the other guys do? Catch I mean, the snitch. yeah, like at least competing. Like they're good wow, at, at their sports, craft. Guys, <laughs> yeah. really? But like, I feel like that's going to come into play. Like whether it's like integrity we've seen from Cedric or Crumb becoming one of the best in the world at seventeen or eighteen years old. Yeah. Like he works hard. But he's good at what he does. He's good on a broom. He's awkward on his feet. Yeah, so, he's so true. Probably, he might not be the greatest. He's going to be yeah, running down he's not well -rounded. to get something and then trip over himself mm -hmm. 20 times. You never know. And Maybe. Flora's just Are daintily you running by like, oh, you're such a loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like so easy for her. I got your back, Jen. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, Danny. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes down. <laughs> Do you think Cedric's going to be any good at these? I mean, we really don't know anything about any of these people that much, so it's hard to make yeah, these guesses. Yeah, that's why I'm like, where are you coming from? I think Harry will be good at this stuff, but the problem is he usually has a team. He's got he's got Hermione and he's yeah. got Ron, and now he's kind of going to be on his own, I think. Um, he's gone on his own, though. He leaves them behind. It's true. Yeah. He does leave them behind for the final moments, like yeah. with Quirrell and stuff. <laughs> to get all the glory. And with the Patronus, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do feel like it, he's the least prepared for this yeah i feel mm, well it's because i saw the cover of this <gasps> i'm not gonna say anything the cover's giving away more <laughs> no because more? i'm just thinking ahead and like the uh, okay. tri cup of the champ whatever the heck this thing is what is it called <laughs> tri wizard championship Crack tournament the crap pot yeah <laughs> just throw <laughs> them all in the <laughs> 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 huh. i just feel no i'm not gonna say it <laughs> Wait. You and your uh, your mystery solving. Anyway, well, yeah. who is uh, who is your favorite person? Who wins the house cup in these two chapters? Because we only got through two. And this, well, this uh, these two chapters will probably go pretty seamlessly into the next two as well. Yeah. But just quick, who is your favorite two characters or favorite characters? Sorry, in these two chapters. Mm. I'm gonna say Moody. I think mm. oh, we didn't really come up in these chapters. I'm I'm projecting to the next one or mm. two. Yep. Let me not say that. I'll say Hermione. 
Okay. Ah, oh, shoot, but that's you really next up, too. You just yeah, said, you're right, because you her, like. but her talk with Harry about Ron yeah, didn't come up yet either. Because yeah. we read to 18, so I can't really include either of those. So you got nothing. Dumbledore. Yeah. Dumbledore, he actually yeah. is doing good stuff yeah. here. He's kind of running the show. He's like, he's being mature. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds funny to say that, but uh, he's yeah, I'll give to mature. Yeah. Dumbledore is probably my favorite too. And even my favorite moment in these chapters is when Fred and George jump in and they have the beards and he's just laughing in the back. Yes. I love that. It just so, it shows so much yeah. of the character of him. And because he did that, it made Fred and George feel comfortable to laugh at themselves yeah. too. That whole environment just felt like healthy. Yeah, exactly. Like how many times have you gotten in trouble and like the person who's like is supposed to be the disciplinarian is sitting there like laughing and having a good time with you saying like, oh, that was a great joke. Mm. You know, like that would be so impactful as a kid. Like, okay, this isn't crazy serious. Like you got to like be responsible, but let's have a good time. Right. I love Dumbledore's goofiness in these chapters. Yep. Yeah. Ladies. I I don't think he's won yet. Has he? Not from my perspective. I want to give it to him too. Yeah. I don't think he has. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't, hasn't made it to the top yet. Congrats, Dumbledore. Jen. I want to pick someone else. <laughs> I mean, Madame Harry, Maxine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> she had a decent chatter. So that was all right. Uh, she yeah. Was, she was somewhat level-headed. She's pretty good. I don't know. I'm just trying to picture Hagrid, like, flirting with him. Yeah, that was so cute. <laughs> I love it. Was that in that chapter? I think or so. That was right? next. Yeah, oh, I think same. it was one of oh, these yeah, where no, he, was... he looked at her misty-eyed or whatever, yeah, yeah, the same yeah, way he looked before. at Norbert. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, such oh, a good line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that in this chapter? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Okay, it was. I thought so. I had that I cracked up at that. That was a great one. They couldn't hear what Hagrid was saying, but he was talking to Madame Maxime with a rapt, misty-eyed expression Harry had only ever seen him wear once before. Before, when he had been looking at the baby dragon <laughs> Norbert. Norbert. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Uh, so oh, Hagrid. You think he's gonna ever get married? We'll talk about that next one. Well, there he, what did, we talked about his dating they, profile. They weigh a ton, their kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like Ron, yeah. Ron, right? Didn't I think Ron so. said that or someone? Yeah. Hmm. Can you imagine what their kid would look? Yeah, like? yeah, it was Ron. Maybe. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter and the first time readers. Woohoo! Every time we think we're going to get through, like, I know, oh my so gosh. much more. We're like, yeah, we'll cruise through this. You guys think we're going to get through so, so much Christian more. I bring it back to reality. Yeah. 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 Because I looked at it, I was like, we have over an hour. We're definitely going to get to, like, three or four. <laughs> nope. My questions are all scattered, too. So even for the next two chapters, I don't have a ton of, ton of questions for the next two. But it, it, the thing that makes it really fun is you guys just come up with such interesting stuff that, like, it makes me have like 20 side questions on this mm. yeah no and it's you're so fun talking with those on the fly yeah, you're just like yeah, yeah. new question boom. Yeah. well what i wanted to say was that i feel as though serious black is going to come to watch the triwizard championship mm. thing and then the dementors are going to come and that's going to throw off everything in Wait, this are... oh no you pointed to the i know shoot What? She pointed to the thing when she said that, so it's something she's seeing on the cover.